Monk 7 Mad here today for a brand new tutorial and today we're going to be building one of these really really nice thumbnails and uh, everyone I think, I'm not 100% has the ability to change the thumb thumbnails around a bit and uh, this is what gives them their unique little look and I've been looking at mine and I thought mm, some of them are okay some of them kind of suck so I thought I'd, uh, I'd style one and make one and I thought why not what I'm going to do today is not only are you going to learn how to make the little uh, thumbnail but you're also going to get the free download for this in the description there's also going to be two layer styles one for the small pattern effect that you can see here and one for the effect that goes on this section here so hopefully you will uh, you'll enjoy that in the description so let's uh, let's, let's get on with building a new document and it's going to be 1280 by 720. Okay, so we're going to a blank document, well, an empty document. And we're going to firstly we're going to need a new layer. And fill the new layer in black. And the way that we're actually going to shape the page so that you get this section for text and this section for the image. Um, you can change it as much as you like at the moment. This is the stage where we're going to work on it. So we're going to go to the tools where it's where the shapes are, and we're going to select the one called the ellipse tool. And what you're going to do is you're just going to draw it on the page, sort of like this, not a proper circle or anything. And what you're going to do is you're going to imagine this is the cut line, which is actually going to be the cut line and uh, just focus on the left hand side here or if you actually want it on the right hand side do it like that so you could have this side as text and this side as a picture or this side as text and this side as a picture it's uh, it's completely up to you and however you want to shape it if you want there to be more curve at the at the top here you can even sort of bring the shape in a little bit. Don't make it so the shape is smaller than the document like that because that just won't work. It has to be a minimum of the the length of the document here. So you could have it sort of like this if you wanted to. And uh what I'm actually I actually prefer to have it just a little bit um taller. Like that. Okay and what we're gonna do is we're gonna press control and on the right hand side this is actually the ellipse shape that we made and there's an ellipse layer so press control hold control and click on the ellipse layer the actual icon box here and by doing that you'll actually make uh, what I keep calling a trail of ants because it, it keeps moving or the ant line and it's actually making the selection so now that we've selected the circle we're actually going to turn the visibility off in the layer section down here by clicking the eye and we're now going to click on layer 1 and by clicking on layer 1 if we press delete we're now cutting from layer 1 and you can make the crucial decision which side you want to keep and we're going to get the magic wand tool and we're going to press delete and press control D to deselect and now we have this which we're going to cleverly name the text area and we can actually now delete the ellipse layer, we don't need that anymore. And what we're going to do is we're going to make a new layer. And we're going to make sure the color is still black. And we're going to press control again, hold control and click on the text area icon. And this time we're going to press control shift. So sorry, that's control and shift and then press the letter I all at the same time. And use the paint bucket to fill this bit in. So we've now got this bit here for the text and we're going to name this bit here the picture area. Pocture. Let's name it the pocture area as I spelt it. Pift. No, I just cannot spell today. Okay, so picture area. Okay, now just to make things clear, the text area must always be on top that is so what she said and uh, how does that even make sense dun 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 right anyway the text area must be on the top 
and the only thing that go above the text area is actually going to be text. So now that we've done that, we can start adding in some groovy textures. Wow, I like the word groovy there. That, that word was really well placed. And uh, add a texture. I like using planetary stuff. I always tend to use planetary stuff. I don't know why. Uh, I just I just think I I like the style. I suppose. And we are going to drag the texture that you want into Photoshop. And we're just going to drag it onto our document. And we can close that off. Okay, so now what we're going to do is, because uh, the uh, texture is actually a bit too big for the document, I'm actually going to zoom out. And I am going to hold shift and use the move tool to drag the shape size down a bit. And it will scale it perfectly, which means it will keep its sizes equal to the size that you're bringing it down to. And what we're going to do is we're going to zoom back in now. And we're actually going to place the texture beneath the text area, but on top of the picture area. So it should look something like this, but maybe with your texture. And you can also add another texture. I am going to use this one here and the same thing so we're just going to bring it into Photoshop zoom out and scale it down by holding shift and dragging from the corner and zoom in and we'll also put it again beneath the text area now with this one I'm actually going to change the blend mode to screen so they uh, sort of combine together, like so. And now that we've done that, we are going to add a little bit of colouring to it. So we're going to build a very small colour correction, and we're going to go to the bottom here where it says, well it doesn't say, but it does now, yeah, create a new fill or adjustment layer. And the first one we're going to select is the gradient map, and make sure it's going from black to white. If it's going from white to black, it'll look like this. Um, so make sure it's black to white and we're going to change the blend mode which is currently at normal to hard light and this will give it a really sort of impacted effect which you should notice very quickly and just to give it a bit more coloring and a little bit more light we're going to add another gradient map and this time this is where you can sort of color it a bit I'm going to use this sort of blue here and I'm going to change the blend mode on this to soft light and I'm going to make sure that's also beneath the text area. So that is pretty much it. But now we struggle to see where the text area is. So one of the two layer styles that I'm going to put in the description is uh, actually going to be the one that I'm going to use now. I would explain how to make it, but honestly, it would probably take me such a long time. So now that we've added this, and the way, if you don't know how to save it, what I'm going to do is I'm going to make a Photoshop document with the with the the, uh, the layer style on it. And what you'll do is you'll double click on the on the shape in the layers section. Go to new style. Give it a name. So this one can be like black glass or something, whatever you want to call it. And when you click OK on it, if you go to the style section and go to the bottom, it will be right at the bottom somewhere. And the same will apply for the pattern effect we're going to put on top now. So, the thing that we've called picture area, we're going to duplicate that, and we're going to drag that above, no, no, beneath the gradient layers. And we're going to double click on this one, and there will also be this style that I'll put in the description as well. I'm actually going to just change it around a little bit before I... Uh, give it a way to make it look a little bit nicer and you can change the, the scale of the, the squares in the background here if you want to keep them you can make them a bit smaller so click OK and we're actually going to duplicate this again and that will make it really really strong and we're actually then going to go on the opacity and just turn it down a little bit on the top one to about 60% so that's looking nice and uh, pretty much finished as well. 
we're now going to just go and add a flare. So let's go and find a nice flare. Don't go too extravagant with the flares. Things like this just won't work. They just uh, they just don't. You want a very simple basic flare, um, which you can actually get in the graphics pack I made a little while ago, and I'll put the link to that in the description um, to help you to to have an effective flare here. And all you're going to do is you're just going to drag that onto the Photoshop document. Firstly, we're going to go to Edit, Transform, and rotate it 90 degrees clockwise. And then we're going to go to where it says Normal and change the blend mode to Screen. Oops, I've moved the background here. That wasn't right. Sorry about this. Uh, oh, I know what I've done. Sorry about this, guys. This has just gone a bit. <laughs> it's gone a bit nuts here. Um, right. Yeah. So just make sure you have the flare only selected, and uh, not every layer like me. And then you're gonna go edit, transform, rotate 90 degrees clockwise. And you're going to put it over here. Make sure it's beneath the text area. And you can have it very simply like this. Or if you want to make it a bit more effective, you can go to Edit, Transform, and Warp. And you can just sort of shape it. I know you can't actually see there, but if I bring it out, if I go to do it again so you can see it. So you go to Warp, and you can just sort of bend the uh, the texture uh, this is only if you want to do this you don't have to do this at all this is just uh, just uh, an idea and it will cover a little bit more of the area then and you can place it somewhere like that and you let's see how it looks does it look good beneath yeah you can put it beneath the the, the color corrections to make it look a lot stronger as well so that is pretty much it. All that you need to do then is add some text. So I'm going to name this the final thumbnail. And I'm just going to put it about there. And we can just colour it in with a gradient or something. And uh, that's it. Then you're done. Then you can got to save it and use it as your video thumbnail. As long as the file size is beneath 2 megabytes, it's absolutely fine. So, just before we go, I would like to point out that I might be opening up a Twitter page, depending on if anyone thinks it's a good idea. What I will ask is, if you do think it's a good idea, let me know in the description. Uh, not in the description, sorry, in the comment section below, because what I might do... So if I open up a Twitter page or something, I want to try and get some of the subs involved with some stuff because I know subs always love getting involved with stuff. And we might even do some uh, sort of giveaway contests or something every week. So maybe like a free background and thumbnail or free background thumbnail avatar. It doesn't even matter. We'll find some sort of prize or something going good, and uh, hopefully we'll we'll uh, we'll have some fun in the process. So, thank you for watching, guys. Everything is going to be in the description that you're going to need. Thanks for watching. Have an absolutely tremendous day. I hope to see you on some more of my videos, and uh, I hope to see you possibly soon on the Twitter page. Thanks, guys. Take care.